Hey coach, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another, another episode with my friend Andrew Casal, all the way in London. How are we doing, Andrew? I'm very well. How are you doing, Leo? Very good, very good. Happy New Year. How was your Christmas and New Year celebrations? Yeah, Happy New Year to you too. Yeah, it was all good. Um, busy period for, for us accountants, but um, we're, we're getting through it. Nice. Have you set your New Year's resolutions? Uh, yeah, be better at everything. <laughs> <laughs> nice, I like it. Have you stuck to it yet, or you've broken it already? No, no, I think I'm, I'm, I've stuck to it for sure. So, um, you know, going gym, being healthy, that kind of stuff, which is obviously great for, uh, you know, in the sports, in the sports industry. How about you? Me, um, I just treat it as a, an ongoing thing. No, no, you, New Year's resolutions, just keep consistent. That's it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> right. So, Andrew, welcome back to another episode again. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about tax allowable deductions, right? One of your favorite uh, topics. Yeah, it's an exciting one for sure. So, uh, yeah. So, essentially, what we're going to be talking about today is obviously it's going to be specific for sports coaches. We're going to run through what is an actual tax allowable deduction um just the basics of it and then we're going to discuss common expenses that are on the pitch and then common expenses that are off the pitch and yeah it's going to be a bit of a general overview a lot of this can be uh go into go into so much depth um in every single single um sector of it but we're going to have a bit of an overview Another thing as well, Leo, I want to mention is a bit of a disclaimer. Yeah. This is just for general information. Yeah. It's just to give sports coaches uh, a, a better idea of what their common tax allowable deductions are for their sports coaching business. Nice. I'm excited to learn from you today, Andrew. All right. All right. All right. Well, to be honest, you should know a few of these things, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I should do. I should do. Um, but it's always, it's always good to recap, you see. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. All right. Brilliant. All right. Let's let's get into it. So what is a tax allowable deduction? So we're going to start from the top. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, all businesses have to report their income and expenditure to the tax authorities, namely HMRC in the UK. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to be aware that not all income is taxable. Most of it is, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there are going to be some exceptions. So, for example, there's going to be certain grants given by certain organisations or benefits especially for new businesses, which may not be taxable. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be, this is what we're going to be talking about um, today, is expenses for the business. Um, most common uh, deductions that a business owner may think of are actually tax allowable. There's going to be some rules which go against the common sense, mm -hmm. um, and it's just tax law. But essentially, you have your income, you deduct your expenses and you get your taxable profit. And that's essentially what any tax you're going to be paying on there. If you're a limited company or you're self-employed is going to be based off uh, your taxable profit. So mm -hmm. we're going to go into expenses. So, you know, not all, not all expenses are uh, allowable for tax. So one example would be client entertaining. That's strictly not allowable for deducting um, your taxable profit. So, for example, taking clients out to dinner, that's just something that, you know, you can do and you can put it through your business uh, accounts. But it, when coming to uh, calculating your taxable profit, it will be added back because it won't be a allowable expense an allowable deduction, uh, so to speak. So that's pretty much it for, an uh, you know, allowable deduction. Anything on your side, Leo? Yeah, so a common one I know a lot of coaches ha do with the, the clients they work with is they have like an end of year party. So can you allow some of that? Can you uh, deduct all of that? What what's, what's the uh, thing? What's the rules with that? Yeah, that's a good question. So if it's 
if it's a staff event and it's a staff party, then yes, you are allowed um, that. If it's just your clients only, that will be seen as client entertaining, unfortunately. But having said that, it is case by case basis. So any uh, sports coaches that want to understand the rules around that, definitely speak to your tax accounting professional on the specifics of that. But generally speaking, it's not allowable because it's seen as client entertaining. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now we're going to go on to expenses, usual expenses on the pitch. Mm -hmm. So the first one is sports equipment. So you've got your sports balls, your practice nets, your goals, your protective gear, your helmets, shin pads, things like specialist clothing, you know, football boots, mm -hmm. studded boots. Yeah. Now, this is one of the things where I come across with, uh, you know, sports coaches is, and any business owners in the sports industry in general is putting through normal clothing, even if it's, you know, workout clothing you know if you're an instructor having you know that is uh not so much a gray area but how the tax uh authorities see it is if it's a piece of clothing that you would wear on a casual basis mm -hmm. then you can't that is not a allowable expense for tax purposes yeah. we will go on to talk about branded clothing now that's different mm -hmm. so for example, if you've got branded T-shirts, shorts, track suits in the company, the business name, then yes, that is an allowable um, tax deduction. But if it's just a normal, you know, T-shirt and you want to expense that, unfortunately, even if it, it, you are using it only for your your business, it's very hard to justify that uh, with the tax authorities um, to say that is an allowable deduction. So that's one thing to uh, to definitely. So um, essentially, you know, every every piece of clothing that you want to deduct has to have your logo on it, right? Your brand. Correct, correct. Now, of course, as I said, you know, with with other, if there's special pieces of clothing, if it's you know helmets, shin pads, of course, studded boots, it's it's very special. So you don't have to really have branded uh, okay. that has to be branded because it is special. If it is um protective clothing you no need for um you know your business branding to be on it but it's more for the usual clothing um that you would have okay, okay now coaching gear so whistles stopwatches things like that of course those are allowable deductions hiring coaches uh, other coaches or staff you know if you're subcontracting them on the pitch for a set amount of time, um, set amount, or if you've got them on the payroll. If you're a limited company, you could even put yourself on the payroll. If you're self-employed, you can't. Uh, I think we did touch on that in the uh, the previous um, the previous one, the previous podcast. But yeah, essentially, if you're hiring someone to do the job that you're doing or an assistant coach, mm -hmm. then of course that is an allowable deduction. Right. Um, other things as well is sports facility costs. So, you know, things like if you're renting the sports grounds, of course, that is going to be an allowable deduction for, for your tax. Mm -hmm. Okay. That. So now, going back to going back to coaching yeah. gear, sorry, Andrew. Like no, when you talk about stopwatch, right? Now a lot of coaches watching this, right, they might be thinking, right, so I can just go and buy a, a, a Rolex watch with a stopwatch on it and and deduct that CAC, is that the case or does it have to be a specific watch <laughs> yeah so look it, it, it's it's you know this is these are good questions because the we start talking about does it make commercial sense to buy a you know five thousand pound watch which you're just using it you know and it, as you said it's got other gadgets which not really going to be used for your business hard to justify that really hard to justify that don't get me wrong. Of course, you can get a very good stopwatch, and it can be quite pricey. But you know, it, it, it's you got to go to the, you got to ask yourself: Does it make commercial sense? And um, to 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 really make make that uh, decision, really. Yeah, and also you've got to put yourself always 
in the position of someone doing the taxes in the sense that, you know, if you're going to put through a thousand pound watch, what's what's the reaction they're going to have? Are they going to be thinking, yeah, this is what's the why would someone spend five thousand pounds of their business money on a watch? Exactly. And what I would say, actually, and, you know, there's so many different scenarios where it could be allowable. So mm -hmm. what I would say is speak to your tax professional because if you're considering, especially if you're considering to buy buying a, a piece of equipment which is relatively high in value, yeah, it's always good to speak to um, your accountant and ask them, look, I'm looking to buy this. Is it allowable for, for tax reasons? And they can confirm it. Yeah. It, you know, puts you at ease, peace of mind that, you know what, that's actually for the business and you can um, expense it, especially for sports. There are, you know, as we mentioned about the clothing, that can be a common one. So it's a really good idea to to speak to um, a tax professional on on these these nuanced uh, scenarios. Yeah, love that. Okay, now off the pitch. So here we've got things like subscription costs. So if you got if you're subscribed to a sports magazine newsletter, a dedicated stream, streaming channel. Um, so if you're, for example, a netball uh, coach and you want to look at strategy, um, and there is a you know a streaming channel which is dedicated to netball, then of course that is uh, an allowable expense. CPD, which is continued professional development. If you're a sports coach and you are with a professional body, for example, they may require you to have a uh, certain CPD across, you know, the year. Yeah, yeah. Any payments towards that, of course, is an allowable expense. If you're doing refresher courses or you're updating skills, or even if you go into a sales uh, seminar to increase your your sales, that as well is uh, an allowable expense. And it, whether it's online or if it's live, um, is also allowable as well. And another thing as well is business insurance, liability, property, business devices, you know, those things as well are allowable for um, for tax as a deduction. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're a coach watching and you want this graphic, get in contact with us and we can that we can send that through to you because I know a lot of coaches watching. They'll definitely want this because it's really good information. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it will it, definitely. And right now I'm focusing on one thing, but the mind map will show everything um, in its entirety. So definitely be useful for sports coaches, especially starting out. Mm -hmm. OK, um, next thing, advertising and marketing costs, you know, pretty self-explanatory, but any sort of social media ads, any sort of campaigns, posters banners flyers of course allowable deduction um, for your business okay travel this one's a bit of a juicy one so <laughs> i'm going to talk a bit more of a summarized here because it can be as i mentioned there can be a session specifically on travel and it, uh, and i'm going to reiterate as well it is specific case by case basis but as gen your personal car then you can, that is allowable but you have to claim the mileage on that you claim the okay. mileage on that if it's your personal car for business journey so you have to make sure that you're recording you have a mileage log and then you give that to your accountant at the end of the year okay. um if you have a company car a bit uh, you know specifically for the the business and it's addressed the company car is bought under the, the, the company like then yeah then then there are more costs allowable however there are other factors to consider for example co2 emissions of that car um and whether that car is going to be stationed at your place of work or at your home mm -hmm. there's other things involved in there it can be quite complicated as i said there could be a separate podcast on travel in its entirety so 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 yeah any questions on that leo no it's a good one i think um i think this is something a lot of coaches don't don't realize uh, with travel okay um and 
again, have it like purchasing like a, a van to take your equipment. I think it's a really good investment. And that's, again, another uh, tax allowable deduction that coaches should take advantage of. Because not, not only can you deduct it, but it's also going to help you to grow and scale your business to get to different places, etc. So I think it's really good information. Um, and like I said, I think a lot of coaches definitely need to need to make notes on some of these things because it's it's really good. Yeah, and I think it's a really important point you mentioned there, a van, because from a tax point of view, a van is considered plant and machinery, which in a simple sense, you get a lot more tax relief on mm. the van. Yeah. Whereas a company car, you don't. It's based on your CO2 emissions and there can be a reduced percentage which you can deduct. Mm. Generally speaking, vans are a lot more tax efficient and, you know, especially with sports coaches, it's going to be something, if you've got a lot of equipment, it's a much better investment for you. Uh, and as I've mentioned before, don't make any purchases just for the tax, yeah. you know, reasons. But it's good to know. It's definitely a factor to take into account. Yeah. Uh, no, always speak to your accountant before before making them as well. Definitely, definitely. Um, nice. Okay. Food whilst out on business. Okay, this is another juicy one. <laughs> so there are a couple of things there, and this is probably even more nuanced than than travel. But you want to think about how far is where are you going? Are you mm -hmm. going to a sports facility? Uh, are you renting sports grounds which is near your um, near your your base, your your business base? If it is then generally speaking, it's not allowable because what HMRC would say is you could just go back home and eat. So distance is one factor. Mm -hmm. Another factor is, is it a normal commute? Are you going to the same place over and over again? Another, another factor as well is, is it temporary? Are you contracted with that sports facility um, to maybe just be there for six months? If it is temporary, then it's more likely it's going to be allowable. But if there's mm -hmm. any inkling that it's a normal commute then you can't deduct um any sort of if you're going you know if you're getting a sandwich on the way there you can't deduct it of course if you're going to a seminar which is a few hours away that's that's seen as, as allowable so it it comes to you know common sense mm -hmm. but also there are these little um differences that can make all the difference okay like that yeah yeah Okay. Um, right, the bonus rounds Ooh. before we finish up. <laughs> Andrew's providing a bonus for us. <laughs> okay, as I said, these can be a, a separate podcast on each of these can be can be made, but generally speaking, for new businesses, you know, ensure that bills are in the business name, in the company name. Mm. You know, if it's your mobile phone, ensure that that contract is in the company name for it yeah. to be an allowable expense. Do it from the start and then you can forget about it. Mm -hmm. Pre-trading expenditure. We mentioned this before in a previous uh, podcast, but if you're a new business, you can claim seven years prior to starting uh, trading, starting your business. Uh, you can take into account all those expenses leading up to that seven years prior. So that is something that, especially for new clients that I have, Take advantage of that because it allows you to, you know, give you a chance to grow your business. Because if you're a very profitable business to start off with, you're allowing, you're taking into account these expenses that you've made towards your business um, mm -hmm. before starting out. So definitely a good planning point there. You know, loss relief. If you've made a loss, most businesses in their first, second year do make a loss. Mm -hmm. And it's good to take advantage of that. You can set that uh, loss off against future profits. So it's important to note that. So, you know, if you're a business and you're making these expenses, you're making a loss and you're just say, thinking, look, there's no point taking these into account because I've made a loss already. Well, not really. You want to make sure you take into account all your expenditure mm -hmm. um, because that will be set off against any future profits in the future years. 
Nice, I like that. And last, lastly, is capital allowance. Now, capital allowance in the tax world is if you're buying a large piece of equipment, that is, you know, if it's over a hundred pounds, two hundred pounds, and it's lost you, and it is to last you more than two years, mm -hmm. it would be seen as a capital expenditure. Now, especially in your first, you know, few years of of starting your business. You may want to defer your capital allowances, especially if you're self-employed, because you can use your uh, personal allowance yeah. to offset uh, any tax payable. So it's definitely a good one. And a lot of businesses are not aware of it. Deferring capital allowances is a good one. And if you think that you might be in scope of this, definitely speak to your accountant about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love that. And gave me a bit a, a great idea with something we'll do in a in a later episode is a lot of the coaches that I work with they they're looking to invest into indoor facilities so I don't know if that does that fall under capital allowance or or what what what, what is that it's more buildings that's more the buildings allowance but we can definitely talk about that in uh in in a future podcast for sure perfect perfect love that perfect all right Andrew well Again, great information. Um, I think the biggest message here is when you make a purchase, uh, always speak to your accountant. Um, and they, they'll be able to yeah. guide you on what you can deduct, what's allowable. Uh, but Andrew, again, thank you for coming on, sharing your knowledge. Uh, it's very valuable. Uh, and I know I, I definitely, I always learn something new from you. So Amazing. thanks again. And I'm looking forward to our, to our next chat. Brilliant. Same. Thank you. Take care.